Hey, welcome to Following the Chosen with me, Ben, and Laura. Laura. Yes. If people have not been following us on Following the Chosen up mm. until this point, because we're now talking about episode four in season three, Unclean, part one. If people had not been following us up until now, which they should have been, they should rush back, <laughs> right? To the other yes, episodes. Yes, absolutely. Because they were awesome. They're amazing. Amazing. You can yeah. sound a little bit... <laughs> Talk it up. Talk yeah, it up. Yeah, sorry, sorry. You haven't lived until you've seen those episodes. And then come back and join us as we talk about Unclean Part 1. So I'm Ben McKechn. I'm on Hope Mornings in Sydney, Australia. Laura, undistracted podcast mm-hmm. host, Hope Afternoons, presenter. Both of us are film and TV reviewers and just quietly fans of The Chosen, which we presume you are. We presume that safely because you are here and you are ha- joining us in this conversation about episodes of from season three. If you want to join in this conversation, which we know that you do, comment down here. Let us know anything, any thoughts. Doesn't matter what they are. Nothing's off limits, Good or right? bad. Good yes. or bad. Unclean, part one. Clean, part one. I said unclean, didn't I? Yeah, I, it's like, clean. I sh- really should have written it's my okay. notes better. <laughs> Thank you. Now I've cleaned that up. Clean, part one which is before part two. At the end of our last discussion, Laura, I was pretty pumped about what's coming in Clean. And then Mm. I realized, oh, what I was really most excited about is in Clean part two. So I might save my excitement levels for next week. Although I quite like this episode, but yeah, I I wasn't sold. No, I will actually say this, this episode was one of the weaker ones. I thought of what we've seen so far in terms of how they bring it together as a story as a piece of engaging television, from that perspective, I wasn't as engaged as I really wanted to be, particularly because they started it with this, like, black and white thing going on. Thing. Well, you visual mean, effects. Artistic choice artistic of shooting choice. in black and white, the opening sequence before the titles. Yes, yes. that's what you mean? And it ah. kind of, it. I don't know, like, I, they started there and I thought, what is, what is happening? Because normally black and white use that as an effect to go back in history, right? It's some yep. kind of flashback or something. Yep. And then I'm like, wait a minute, this is the part of the story where the disciples have been sent, sent out. You're showing instances of them praying for people, seeing people healed, all of these different things. So I was like, why? It, it just really threw me. And then as well, for a second, I was like, maybe something's wrong with my phone. Like maybe <laughs> things aren't connecting right, something. And then the titles kicked in and I thought, oh no, okay. Like you've, this is a no, choice that was a deliberate and I've just not choice. been caught by it. And also the sound was really whispery. We, we were caught out by the same thing. And we had the subtitles on at that time. Did you as yes, well? Yes, I subtitles had subtitles on? going. And when they said like inaudible talking yeah. or inaudible voices, I thought, okay, cool. I've not gone deaf. My phone's not broken. I'm not seeing things how I shouldn't be. This is a decision they've made. And vocalizing. Yes, I is love it. Is that an actual thing? Is that a real word? When, it, think... when, when that lady's singing in the background, yeah. vocalizing? It's because it's more of the like, bleh, like thing <laughs> as opposed to actual articulated words. So I we wish just I was watching you watching the episode as you were trying to work it oh. out and you were singing like that to make sure the noise, the, aud- the audio was yes, okay. Yes, it was beautiful and it was confusing. But they started there and I think then they kind of slowed. Everything just felt like it was getting a little slow. But the conversations, the, the themes they raised in the episode were still good. I was just lost a little bit with how they chose to do the telling, I think, this time around. Wow, you sound like me. Last conversation we had about episode three where I was bad cop and you were good cop. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the choices I felt that the chosen team had made, very similar to what you're describing yeah. now in terms of their embellishments and the pace and why they're putting in things here and there. This episode overall, though, I quite liked, even though mm. we've talked about it as well, that various episodes throughout all the seasons are like br- bridges to something else where there isn't necessarily a high point or a moment of, oh, we've arrived. It's you are setting up all these different threads that you hope safely is going to converge at some later point but i actually Mm. quite like the black and white artistic choice at the start i like when the chosen (laughs) gets all bold yeah and like this is the episode where we're going to start with black and white and inaudible talking and vocalizing and i can respect yeah like and i normally do like respect an artistic choice it just seemed to be one that came out of nowhere and didn't i feel take me 
effectively into the story they were trying to tell because I was just confused. You didn't like though some of the depictions in really quite grainy black and white of demons being cast out and the mm. preaching being done. I found it actually quite affecting. The more I absorbed myself in it once I worked out the audio wasn't off and they yeah. made a deliberate stylistic when, choice here. Yeah, well, when you set aside all of that stuff and you kind of go, let me see the story you're trying to tell here. Absolutely. Like it's really good. It's There's something really powerful in that and it does give you the ability to think about what the disciples really experienced when Jesus said, hey, go, go do all of these things. I've given you, you know, the authority to do it. Have fun. Um, <laughs> it's, it kind of helps You're you. You're paraphrasing. I am. It helps you get a picture of what that would have been like and how surprising it would have been to them too after having been with Jesus, seen him do these things. And then in one instance, instance where there's a young girl who's blind and she's prayed for and then she sees the disciples are celebrating that. It's awesome. But they're also like, what the heck just happened? Like, how did we How did we do this? Because it's not their own ability. It's Christ working through them. It's still something they don't fully comprehend or understand. So I, I appreciated that. Which they then get to the disciples and the chosen team gets to later on in the episode when we reconvene with the disciples about the mission they've been on and these glimpses that we've seen before the titles crop up. Mm. In between that, and the disciples talking later on in the episode, Laura, what did you make about everything else in between? I found there was a lot of quite subtle, but it seemed to be an episode about men and women and different roles that they had in the first century. And then also, as we've talked about previously, because it's cropped up previously, about the different responses, different reactions. On this occasion, there was a lot more emphasis on Jewish leaders, religious leaders, and how they are responding to Jesus and the crowds. Mm. What did you make of that build up to the disciples eventually having this chat about what just happened? Yeah, there's a lot of different elements in there, isn't there? Because one of the things that really stood out to me, particularly as the leaders are discussing Jesus' existence and whether or not he is or is not the promised Messiah, what kind of impact what he's teaching is really going to have on the community, there was this moment where one of the characters says something along the lines of knowing more isn't always helpful. And that really stood out to me because as they started to research what scripture said up until that point and what type of things Jesus was saying, gradually some of these leaders who've been really resistant are going, hey, the more I look into this, like, this guy may be legitimate or what this guy's teaching may actually have some truth to it. And it's this moment where they almost realize like our ignorance would be much more useful because if we weren't ignorant or rather if we you know if we know too much we have to actually confront the truth that Jesus may be the guy we've been waiting for or not right like they've got to confront that question and I found that one of the uh, I suppose most like one of the moments that really stood out to me because I think that's probably a similar question for all of us, right? Like if you just ignore the conversation that Christianity brings up, if you ignore the idea of Jesus and all of the things that we say about him being the son of God and stuff, you can kind of park it over there. But if you start to really look at it and then start to see some truth to what the Bible says, you then have to reconcile that with what you think and believe and how you you know, respond in the world. One of the best examples of that, I reckon, in this episode clean part one is this relationship between rabbi yusuf and jairus who we know is going to figure more prominently as this episode and other episodes go along and we'll talk about that real soon but i like their relationship and you, even the looks on their faces the acting's great in some of the scenes with them where they're talking about the impact of jesus on themselves hmm. the teachings in the sermon on the mount how that's being reported back to head office as it were and whether they are both in some sort of conspiracy or not about telling the truth or not telling the truth for one of the reasons is they're not sure yet if they can say out loud what they think of Jesus because mm. of what they know, not just about what the Messiah was meant to be, but also the ramifications of announcing this out loud, yeah. that this bloke we think actually is who he says he is. Mm. That's going to have all kinds of ripple effects for their job yeah. And across their religious community. Yeah. And you can just see in a couple of looks in their eyes early on in the first half of this episode, the weight of that, but also the excitement and the enthusiasm and how they can almost not contain themselves. Yeah. And how they just want to bust out with, come on, mate, I think he's the Messiah. Yeah. Like, I, I think this is the one we're waiting it. for. Yeah. And I think you're right too in bringing up the, the roles of men and women, right? Because particularly for Eden and Simon, 
that starts to like their narrative starts to lift to the top a little bit more and particularly you see like I feel like we all experience in this depending what kind of family you live in like there's that person who's like it's an open door come on over like everyone hang out and then there's the person in the situation of the chosen the wife who has to go okay this means I've got to like clear the table for everyone I've got to like set up a great meal I've got to make sure everything's organized and you've just you know created this open invite party type situation and what's more you've been away for the last couple of weeks mate yeah and you and your mates have been out doing whatever you've been doing and I've yeah. been here on the home front and even <laughs> Simon like doesn't notice what Eden's done to the house and you know nah. he's just he's a bloke right he doesn't notice ha 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 yeah but it reinforces <laughs> some of the divide going on between mm. men and women at the time mm. um and what the expectations were and perhaps still are in mm. some in some families and you're, you're right it kind of uh, starts to build that starts to build on itself across this episode and I'm expecting across the rest of the season mm. and what did you make then of there's this interesting subplot effectively about a cistern a broken cistern that on the surface of it just seems a bit what like yeah. why are we bothering with this sewage uh, broken issue. sewage outlet issue um, but i liked how that went through and one of the things i liked about it is again the depiction of men and women roles and you just see in a couple of really subtle moments some are just like 20 second scenes maybe of lines of women going out to somewhere way outside the town, all women, collecting water because the water is dirty in the city. Mm. And that also involves Eden. And then that also involves a lady who seems like she's come from a long way away. And we start to discover that there is something that she's been dealing with for, let's say, 12 years that has caused her to be outside society. What have you Mm. made about this character who, as soon as you hear 12 years and you learn what, this lady has been suffering from most people who have read the bible at any point i think will register who this figure is what did you think about her introduction yeah. well you suddenly go okay you're the woman with the issue of blood who really just wanted to touch the hem of jesus garment and i found i mean she's such an I- I- iconic's not really the right word but her story <laughs> her story is one of the most well-known ones i think within the bible the miracle the exper- that she experiences the hope and the desperation that she has within her situation so many people are familiar with it but i don't know that we've ever visualized her or imagined her humanized her in the way that the chosen does which is something we've brought up many times before this is the thing of the chosen that it it opens your eyes up to the human side and to the story beyond the pages that we see in scripture of all of these different people and maybe you know obviously the the title of this episode is called clean so the theme of the system being there for like what reason you go well it's tying in to this message of cleanliness what did it mm. mean to be clean and unclean in the time of jesus and how does that apply to us now mm. and the conversation that that um simon has with i forget the name of the roman guys Gai- so Gaius and simon they're sitting on top of that cistern having this conversation and in one part of that it relates to the sort of the the things that jesus is going to set them free from so the jews have all of these different practices about clean unclean can do this can't do this and simon says you know essentially it's a lot but jesus is going to fix it And then you fast forward to the situation that this woman finds herself in. She has been excommunicated. There are men that won't speak to her. There's a real anger at her for the, you know, quote unquote, uncleanliness that she's brought into this environment. But it's really only Eden that has any sense of compassion for her. And of course, being another woman, she's going to relate to her more than the men will. But I think the sensitivity that her story is given in this episode of The Chosen is really so important because it's something beyond her control and all of these different things, but it's really affected her life in so many ways. And I loved, I think, the the degree to, the degree to which you get a sense of just how hopeful it would have been for her to think that Jesus could do something for her, bring healing for her that nothing else had been able to up in that point. Like she, up to that point, she speaks about going to doctors and no one can assist. And yet there's this real hopefulness in her, like a last ditch attempt at helping, you know, that Jesus is able to bring. And I think that probably speaks to a lot of people who will watch this episode going, I've tried everything. I'm at my wits end. 
out of desperation, I'm going to have hope. And maybe Jesus can be the realization of that. Didn't you find it interesting at that point where Eden, and I think it's Veronica is the name of the character of this lady been suffering from bleeding for 12 years. They have this conversation at the water and she's pouring out her heart about what she has poured her money and time and efforts into being healed. And I found it quite remarkable that Eden and, and this uh, Veronica points out that she is here to see the preacher who is healing people. And Eden at no point indicates that, oh, he's been around my house mm. all like loads and he's probably going to be around my house this afternoon. It was like the biggest open door for evangelism that's ever happened up until that point, let's say. And she doesn't take it. I, mm. I was quite struck by that, how she, she's she got things going on in her own life. And it seemed like, yeah. I don't know, politeness or just trying not to um, put impose yourself, or... impose on somebody else. But this other lady is clearly crying for help. And you're yeah. right, there's compassion in Eden's character. I was quite struck by, just tell her about Jesus. Yeah, tell yeah. her that you know Jesus. But then that you comes can hook back this to, up. <laughs> I know him. But then I think that comes back to they're trying to follow the Bible story, right? Because that conversation between Eden and this woman, that's not in the Bible. You know, like that's not something we have. That's just them putting it in there. We know that this woman has to like find her way and that's get true, to Jesus. That's and, true. You know, so I think it's like in practical sense, you'd go, of course, you're going to say come over but in the process of creating the story they can't do that yeah i should have actually thought about how Eden, <laughs> eden's not in the bible and uh i don't know i don't know why i'm getting angry at a character well, in a show passionate. that's fictitious but she's involved <laughs> um <laughs> in the middle of this episode is similar to like the last couple there seems around the middle this big thing that sort of happens and this one's where the disciples have come back from their ministry and reporting back to each other about what they've been doing and their lack of understanding and some of their frustrations that kind of thing but for me it didn't seem like and i think from judging by your comments earlier for you too it didn't seem like as big a high point as some of the other episodes mm. like a really notable feature it, there was a lot of cool stuff in there in this debrief session but it wasn't like, wow, I'm really glad that I waited half an hour to to get to this, including yeah. getting through a, a bit where I see what's doing in the story, but there's like a whole side hustle conversation going on with Tamar and Mary and Zebedee and this olive oil business, business. that's that's starting up. Zebedee selling the boat and like throwing mm. his lot in with the oil. And this could be a tent making, to, to mix my metaphors, mm. a ministry paying machine that could be erupting here. But I think the thing I like about it most, because it's clearly this will pay off at some other point, excuse the pun. It'll like, it, I guess it'll land at some point. One of the things I like about it is this ongoing tension between Mary and Tamar and about this jewelry that Tamar wears and the significance of it and whether she's holding on to the life that she led before mm. and she hasn't given over fully to Jesus, including material possessions. But there's something about this jewelry that she's going to let us know about very, very soon in an upcoming yeah. episode that actually should make you have more compassion and more understanding for her. And also to point forward to why I'm excited about next episode, the lady at the center of this episode, the lady is crawling, scrambling to get to Jesus and touch the hem of his garment. That happens in the next episode. And my goodness, it's like, will make you want to cry and punch your air, <laughs> fist in the air all at the same time. But back to this episode, Laura, and so the powwow between the disciples having come back from all over the shop where mm. Jesus had sent them out to, how did you fare with that? Like you say, the moments within this episode don't, there wasn't, like there's no huge, like big elevated moment of amazingness, if you no, want to you're put it that way. you're unlikely to tell your mates, you really got to cut forward to yeah. like episode four, but smash then, it, it's so good. My kind of love-hate relationship with this episode comes from the fact that despite there being some artistic choices and pacing and all of that that I didn't feel like was as strong as some of the other episodes, there are these very significant uh, conversations or themes that come out of it, right? So one of the moments in that particular scene that grabbed me was when one of the disciples says, as they're talking back and forth about why when we do this is this working we don't fully understand what we've been sent out to do necessarily but we're all having different experiences with it they're kind of just back and forth thing a bit over their experiences being disciples and that jesus and, did send them out without understanding yeah, well that's one of the lines it's like because they were kind of saying we recognize that this power that we do these things by is not our own we recognize it's jesus through us but it's like yes he gave us power but he didn't give us understanding and so they still have 
so many questions. There's still so much that puzzles them. And I really thought that was an interesting thing to point out that like when you're living the Christian life, God promises a level of authority, right? Like you given the mind of Christ and all these things, like this is what scripture tells us. But then it's so beyond comprehension to fully understand exactly what that means. What's that meant to look like? How does that apply to my life? How come in some instances it looks like this and in other instances it looks like that? All of these sorts of things. I just thought, yeah, like that's kind of the way of it, that we do have a level of strength and peace and different things that come from having a relationship with God. But we don't fully understand it or know how to necessarily communicate it to other people very well. And I love that in this episode of The Chosen, they kind of give permission for that question, for that lack of understanding to exist, while also these disciples still having a great impact on the people around them. And I just found that really encouraging. I was like, yeah, we don't always fully understand this whole thing that we talk about but that doesn't stop it being able to have a valuable impact on us and others. And another huge point of encouragement, I reckon uh, as a viewer watching this now, thinking about what might have happened back in the day when Jesus and his disciples were together, is the disciples acknowledging how hypocritical they are, how hypocritical they felt Mm. as they're espousing all these incredible words of Jesus and calling people to follow him while knowing that they are not living it out or unable to. They don't even understand, let alone, but then also feeling a bit more like, I I can't actually live up to this, but I'm calling you to do it at the same time, which surely is the bind that, every single human is in, let alone every Mm. single human that follows Jesus, that as much as you strive to with the mind of Christ that you pointed out, we're we're not Jesus. We're not perfect. Mm. We might say one thing, but not necessarily practice what we preach. And I liked that that was sort of embedded. It's one of these gems that pops up from time to time in this episode. Yeah, It's embedded in there, but it's actually a great point to stop and reflect on yourself Mm. about not just your own relationship with Jesus, but how you live it out. And even Mm. how honest are you about the fact that I don't want to be hypocritical. I'm not trying to elevate hypocrisy. Mm. I should just be acknowledging it in my life. It's a real thing and trying to do what I can to stamp it out also. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's something that we do, like you say, need to be aware of in the sense that like, there is a real difference between intentional hypocrisy, like saying you should be generous and then, you know, willingly being mean and tight-fisted and all of these sorts of things versus the hypocrisy that is innate within the fact that we say be loving to other people you know follow the example of Christ but of course we cannot live up to that like it's kind of like I find it not funny but like it's funny to me that like Christians there's a criticism that can be made that like everyone's hypocritical and all this kind of stuff and again you don't want to be knowingly hypocritical but then it's like there is an inherent hypocrisy in saying like, <laughs> let's be like Jesus. And particularly for pastors, yeah. it's like you're literally yeah. preaching from the platform to live up to an expectation that none of us possibly can. But <laughs> we're all we're all like agreed in the belief that there's benefits in being Christ-like. So yes, acknowledge your hypocrisy, but don't go intentionally after it. We should also acknowledge that in this episode, Jesus shows up must be like 45 minutes in something like that he's he's barely in it he just he, pops by it kind of lobs at this point where it seems to reinforce some of the male female dynamics of what's going on particularly men just kind of waltz in do their thing and while women are really the hard workers going on all around the place and interestingly jesus doesn't really comment particularly on it and he does appear to know what's going on particularly in mm. simon and eden's relationship and household but he He's, he's like walking this tightrope of his mission, his word going forward, and that being primary. But he's also compassionate upon the hypocritical, sinful, less than perfect individuals yeah. that are involved in it. I found that one of the more interesting moments in this episode of effectively gate crashing again, Simon and Eden's house, yeah. <laughs> acknowledging that, but then also like, but we've got a job to do and yeah. we, we need to get on and do it. And then also towards the end, there's this edict that's handed down from the highs up in Jerusalem about anyone who says they're basically anyone claiming to be the son of man, you're going to get run out of town like that. Mm. You're going to get stopped. And then you've already talked about it. There's this quite unexpected scene, I think. I think it is the final one. Oh, there's a nod right at the end to Jairus and his daughter and wonder what's going to happen there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll end on that cliffhanger just before the cliffhanger. Simon and Gaius. So Jesus' disciple, Roman 
ruler, local ruler guy, having a bit of a powwow at the broken yeah. cistern. Why, why do you think that is included at this point? Mm, it's an interesting decision. And I was I was wondering the same thing when I watched it because they're, they meet at a time where Simon, I think it is just after Jesus, come, Jesus comes in and Simon's yeah. like, I just need to get out of the house. But he kind of storms out, leaving his wife there to deal yeah. with everybody else that's in the and house. Jesus He's like, I says, can't handle it. I'm out. Yeah. And acknowledgement, not all dudes just waltz in and out unawares of the situation around them. Okay. Like no. points to the guys that have a little self-awareness. You do exist. Including right? in the first century. I imagine yes, you guys exist. Sure. Right. But Simon's like, something's up with Eden. I don't know what's going on. Jesus has just rocked up. My house is chaotic. I need to get out. And so, and on that side note, though, I like, because Jesus, of course, would have known, being all knowing, that what he was going to do was going to stir the pot. And I wonder if it's like, you're intentionally stirring the pot so that Simon deals with these issues. Oh, because, Jesus, the pot stirrer. Right? Hey, yeah. your new kind of name to add to him. But he, uh, Simon leaves the house, goes and just finds somewhere to be. And I think the reason they have him have a conversation with Gaius, on one level, it's just to point out the fact that we can connect with people who are different from us. Like oh, yes. yeah. even yeah. You, like this, is, these are two people who should be opposed in so many ways. These are people who have very different positions in society, but they find common ground where titles, where all these things are set aside for a second. Gaius is like, Simon, what's going on? What are you doing out here? Hey, if you're having, you know, marital problems, this is the best way to deal with Even it. And there's marital modern, advice. Marital advice, like, you know, modern jokes in there and everything you like that. You are right. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, the five, five words, words for marital advice. You're supposed to know. And part of me is like, uh, like another like marriage trope and like another stereotype around that. I can hear my that. own eyes and, rolling as well, I as I saw that. But I, yeah, like that one was one where I was just like, okay, but I like get the joke, like <laughs> well done. But I just thought it really was about the connection that you can have with the differences between people and it just i think it gives again like another reason to say like even the people the roman soldiers those that crucified jesus we know that's coming down the line like even though they did things that make them kind of the quote unquote bad guys of scripture they also were people who had their own reasons for making the choices they did they had lives they had culture they existed in they had all of these things and so it points to the fact that there is more to these people then the titles they had, the roles that they had, you can learn a little bit by listening, you know? And then for Simon as well, it was his moment to have a breather, to contemplate and to work out what he was going to do next beyond that kind of um, exchange. I also got the sort of vibe that something's changed or something's shifted here. I'm not exactly sure what it is. And I've found particularly this season with Gaius, something's going on in his character and his response to Jesus. Mm. And I like how it's being dealt with that. They're not really giving much away, but you are left to suspect what Roman is he going to be in the gospels, particularly as Jesus life unfurls. Like that, is he going to have a more critical role in particularly the end of Jesus life? I'm mm. like looking forward to all of that. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm looking ahead thinking about what's going to happen with Gaius. And there's this, uh, so then I might look back maybe in five, in season five, six, seven, thinking about, oh, this episode, which we thought was okay. Yeah. Here's a moment where it changed for this character, but possibly between the disciples and the Romans or some Romans, you know what I mean? Yeah. There was just, there was a subtle shift mm. in the scene. And then we end on this cliffhanger note of what everyone knew was coming. Jairus's daughter not only being sick, but uh, maybe more than sick. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe she's passed away. Maybe. Maybe she'll be, you know, brought back to life in the next maybe. episode. Maybe. Which we'll talk about definitely when we come back for our next conversation. That's Clean Part 2, which, have you watched it yet? I haven't. I'm trying to do this as we go. Oh. Was that so what we, fresh. We, we didn't talk about that. Were we meant hey. to do that? Do your own adventure. It's fine. I have been. Yeah. And I'm already pumped about what's coming. And But you already know some of the stuff that's coming. But I suppose it's yeah. how it's depicted it's on in screen. in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Make it sound like I've never read that thing. I, yes, it's in, the, it's in the Bible. It's also in The Chosen, Episode 5, Part 2. Ep Clean Part 2. Yes. Episode 5. We'll talk about that. When we gather back around next time, Laura, thank you very much. Thank you. Whatever you thought of episode four, good, bad, or indifferent, let us know. Get in touch. We'd love to interact with you more about The Chosen. Thank you for following The Chosen as we follow The Chosen. Join us next time as we get into, what's it called again? Clean part two. 